since the dawn of the internet. Game Engine fanboys have been raging war. One man with a mullet. Okay, what if I remake a 2D game in Unreal Engine? Hey, I'm Rocky Mullet. Xanderwood started a video series where two game devs, using different game engines, remake each other's games in their own engine. He makes 2D games in Constructory, and since I'm one of the few nonsensical people to make 2D games in Unreal Engine, he was basically forced to challenge me. And I accepted the challenge. First step is to pick what game of his I'm going to remake. The first that caught my eye was Hookshot Hero, since it has a hookshot in it, and I kinda wanted to make one. But it was his very last game, and it seems like I'm supposed to be remaking one of his old games, so I kept looking. I played his Vim Jam 2 game, I remember playing it during the jam. It's a good game, and I don't know how I could improve it. The Torchbearer is a really funny game, but it seems to involve a lot of art to make. Danger Ahead is a lemming like and I kinda don't want to make a lemming like game to be honest. Collect or Die is great, a lot of chaos and power-ups. It's something I wish I added in my game Tough Luff, and making a game with power-ups would be very interesting. But the game also have a very detailed intro, with a lot of art and a cool setup, and I feel remaking the game without it would mean making a lesser version of it, which kinda misses the point of the challenge. Also the game was lacking something, it didn't have a hookshot. I saw a hookshot and now I can get that idea out of my head. I want to make a hookshot. I need to make a hookshot. Xanderwood made Hookshot Hero for the 1am game jam, organized in part by Wannabe e. Manisha. I took part in her previous game jam, Nate Jam, in which I placed in the top 3 with my game Blast Bash. Her community is pretty chill and the jam had a very cool vibe. Unfortunately, I had to skip that jam to not burn myself out before Bracky's Game Jam 2022.2. But remaking that game is kinda like I was part of the jam, right? Since the theme of the jam was combination, Xanderwood made a game about crafting. You collect materials to craft bombs and shelters to progress in levels to gather keys, craft bridges to progress on the world map, and upgrade your health to be able to beat a very hard boss at the end of the game. All of that while being attacked by big pink balls that can be destroyed with a hook projectile. After playing the game and spying on Xanderwood's devlog about the game, there were four things I wanted to improve. All the different features can be overwhelming to a new player. The game needs a playable tutorial, gradually introducing all the mechanics. The shop is a bit confusing, it was hard to tell what you could and could not craft and what material you needed when you couldn't, which was important to know since you would choose a level depending on what material you were looking for. It was a bit grindy, was a bit annoying to have to enter a level just because you were off by one to craft something. I decided that I would add money as a new resource so any materials can be bought with it, in case you're missing a few. The last one wasn't really a problem with the game per se, but I make action games, that's kinda my thing. So I wanted to crank the hookshot to 11 and make it more than a projectile, have the player hook to platforms and swing around larger levels. I really like the simple pink and teal color palette of the original game, so I first experimented with color palettes and made a mock-up, keeping everything in the background in shades of teal and the foreground in shades of pink. For the playable character, I felt the original character lacked a good readable silhouette, so I drew the character with a wider pose to help read the animations, especially since the sprite is only 16x16. 16 16. I created an idle animation in a tile set and I was ready to put that in Unreal. I reused my platformer character template I coded for my game Rosa's Curse, since it's already handling a couple of generic things like coyote time and jump buffering. I made a jump animation, as I usually do, based on the character's vertical velocity. One stretch first frame to give impact on the jump, a rising frame, an apex frame to act as a transition to the fall, a falling frame and a land. 
Then it was time for the hook shot. I made the functionality first without any visuals. To simplify the controls, I decided to slow down time when holding left click, so the player has time to decide where to hook to. So the player doesn't have to control how the hook shrinks and grows, I made it so that the hook always pulls the player toward the hook point, just like it would in Zelda games, and swap the movement inputs to now be toward the vector perpendicular to the offset between the player and the hook point, which allows the player to swing around and use the pull to get some speed and verticality. I made a first pass of what would be our main enemy, the ping balls. They move on a straight line and bounce on walls with a squishy idle animation. For the camera, I reuse a concept I've been using since my puzzle game, Golden Garden. Based on the player's position, I lure the camera between two horizontal boundaries, allowing the player to move on screen instead of being perfectly centered, giving a better feel of the level dimensions. On the third day, I started adding visuals on the hookshot. I don't usually like to scale and rotate pixel art, but I kinda had to for this game. So I made a wobbly line that would go forward and straighten up, with a little shake at the end. Then, in-game, I rotate the line so it's between the player and the hook point, and scale the sprite based on the distance, so it appears to be launched from the player and connects to the destination. As an indicator, I created animated dot lines to help the player with targeting, a white one when the hook would connect, and a grey one when it would miss. I then, as a different sprite, added a hook head that's not scaled to sell the idea that it's kind of a rope attached to a hook. As I was searching for art references for the hookshot head, I realized that a hookshot is generally something shot straight to connect to a point and travel directly to it, and what I made was much closer to a grappling hook. So I didn't really make a hookshot. Oh well, it doesn't matter. It's not like it's in the title of the game or anything. Ah crap. Once the hook head was in place, I made it so that a missing hook would throw a projectile, like in Xander Woods game, to burst the pink balls. Since the hook can be unavailable, I added a little indicator of the hook's availability over the character's shoulder. When destroyed, I made balls split into two smaller ones, based on the impact direction. I added health, an HP bar, a flashing hurt animation, invincibility frames, that and respawn. I had the basics of the game done. Since the game is supposed to be about crafting, it was now time to make the two usable items. I kept the idea of the usable bomb, but since my version of the game was a lot faster with more traversal, I decided to make the bomb like a human torch dash, ending with an explosion. The bomb would reuse the hook targeting system with a different dotted line. When launched, I hide the character sprite and interpolate the attack animation toward the surface normal, so it explodes aligned with the surface. And I teleport the player at the end of the attack, so it looks like they were doing the attack all along. If you are enjoying this video so far, please press that like button, and if you want to see more videos, you can also subscribe. Then I needed to make blocks crack and explode, disabling the collision. At this point, I never modified the tile map at runtime in Unreal. I wasn't even sure if it was possible. I managed to make it work, but let's say I'm glad I'm a C++ programmer. So I created a new actor class derived from Unreal's paper tile map actor, calling it Mullet Tile Map Actor, already improving it with a far better name. I realized I could find an ID for each tile type change that ID at runtime and force it to re-render the tile map, and it worked. One problem though, I could not update the collision, and you also can't set a different collision type per tile in Unreal. The clock was ticking, so I decided to completely remove the collision on the tiles. Since I now knew how the tile map code worked, I parsed all the tiles and spawned an invisible block at the position of each tile allowing me to easily know which tile was hit by the bomb, and I could simply destroy the invisible block to remove the collision. It also allowed me to put spikes directly in the tile set with a different collision type, instead of having to place each of them manually like I did in all my previous games. Then for extra juice, 
I added a camera shake in the direction of the impact and broke the blocks in four small pieces that would be thrown in the direction of the impact. The second usable item in Xander Woods game was a shelter, used as a defense to protect you from incoming balls and to use as a platform to reach higher places. Since the hook made the player swing around fast and high, the shelter concept felt a bit out of place, since you wouldn't need them anymore to gain verticality. I wanted to keep the defensive aspect of the item, so I decided to make an AoE zone that would destroy balls on impact. I needed the attack to make sense with materials that could be used to craft a bridge. In Zeno Wood's game, I thought the metal and rock materials felt similar, so I decided to go with nails instead of rocks and made fireworks filled with nails. I made a small smoke explosion throwing nails. I wanted the visual effect to appear randomly in the area of effect, but random can sometimes lead to all effects spawning in a certain corner not giving a good representation of the attack's actual size. So instead of going full random, I created a list of points around the attack source, put them in an array and shuffle the array. Then I progressively spawn effect on those shuffle points, so it's still random, but I'm sure to use all the points around the source, making it a nice circle zone. There was a problem with this item though. The shelters were used to gate access to certain zone of levels, inciting the player to craft them to allow them to progress. My bomb item was already breaking normal blocks, so I created a new kind of blocks, spiderweb blocks, that could only be destroyed by the spiky fireworks. I made two tiles so it looks like the blocks are progressively destroyed to make it different from the bomb. Then I created a system for gameplay resources, to include every possible crafting materials, the usable items, the bridges, the keys, and even the health upgrades, allowing those resources to persist in between levels. Then I limited the use of bombs and fireworks based on those newly created resources. I created collectibles that would give resources, with pop-up text so it's clear what you just collected. Since those collectibles are often close to each other, I changed the vertical offset of each pickup so the text doesn't overlap. And then on Monday, I wasn't feeling so great, and while I was working, I literally fell asleep on my desk. I was really, really sick. I didn't eat for 4 days, and didn't do much else than trying to exist. After going to the hospital, getting some sweet sweet meds and a lot of more rest, I was finally back on track after losing more than a week. I made the shop. All craftable items on top with the required materials under them, making the text red when the player doesn't have enough so it's clear what the player needs to gather. I listed all materials with a button to buy more with money. There's now a key that spawns after a timer that you need to find to complete the level sending the player to the shop and then back to gameplay. Bursting balls now spawn random collectibles. I made a system to dynamically change the spawn chances based on how many the player already has, so the player has more chances of getting something they need. I created flying dispensers using the same random system, but they can also spawn bombs, fireworks and health collectibles. Then I created a world map strongly influenced by Xanderwood's original map, allowing to unlock levels with keys and progress by crafting bridges. I created 5 levels that contains primarily certain types of materials, displayed on the world map, to allow the player to choose a level based on what material they are looking for. Since it's a remake, I tried to take inspiration of the original level design, blocking paths with bombs, and replacing the gating needing shelters with spider webs. In the original you would often go to a second screen to find a key, so to keep that feeling of discovery, I made a concept of pushable boundaries, where the camera would stop at a certain point but would unlock once the player goes beyond that boundary. Since I now had all the mechanics, it was time for the tutorial, especially since it was one of the main points of improvement of the original game. The best kind of tutorial is the kind that shows you something to do and then asks you to do it by yourself. To avoid overwhelming the player at first, 
I removed the hookshot in the first part of the tutorial, showing the player how to move and jump. Second part gives you back the hookshot as a collectible, explaining the input in front of an obstacle too tall to jump, asking the player to hook their way up. After that point, there's another gap that can be crossed with a simple hook, forcing the player to move during the hook to swing themselves up there, then a single ball to explain the hook projectile. Next portion has a bomb collectible. I made a simple system checking if the player already has a bomb or a bomb collectible, and if not, I spawn spawning dispensers, allowing the player to experiment with the bomb item and not be soft luck if they do it wrong. Next portion does the same with fireworks and spiderwebs. Then a really simple level explaining the timer and the spawning of a key. I made sure that in the tutorial, the player will find enough materials to be able to experiment a little the first time they enter the shop. Once on the world map, I point out on the player to unlock the first level with the key they found in the tutorial. The next day, I created the menus. The main menu was obviously inspired by the original, keeping the subtext, because I, too, have a sophisticated humor. Controls, credits, and options. I made a pause menu with the same options and also added an option to skip the tutorial, in case people want to replay the game and already know how to play. The only thing missing at this point was the boss fight. I first created the level inspired by the original. I made the boss a slightly bigger ping ball with clown-esque eyes and a mouth, so it feels like the original. Now that I knew how to read the data on Unreal style map, I could have made simple pathfinding using the tile map as a grid, but I felt it would make the boss very robotic. So instead, I placed a couple of nodes in the level where the boss could stand, and at the start of the level, I would rake ass in between each point to form a graph of possible connections between the points. Then I made the boss move around these nodes with acceleration, stopping at the node after a duration. I created two attacks where the boss spits either a ball or multiple projectiles targeted at the player's current position. It randomly picks between the two attacks based on the amount of balls currently in the level, so the boss doesn't flood the level with balls. The boss plays one frame of a hurt animation when hit and dies with a big explosion of small balls. The boss has three phases based on remaining HP where they go faster, play their animations faster, move faster, attack more often, and shoot more projectiles. Once the boss was done, I created a windscreen, with a cute animation of the boss defeated and sad. I was finally ready for playtesting. Ok, it's not a game jam game, I won't be judge or anything, but if I'm to make a game, might as well do it right. A couple of people who didn't play the original played the game and gave me feedback. First the layout of the shop could be clearer. It was confusing at first what all the buttons and numbers were, which is a big fail since improving the shop clarity was one of my main goals. Other than that, they found a couple of bugs. Also, Helper Wesley suggested not to allow to get a level key twice, to which I agree. Allowing to take the same key could lead a player to grind the same level for keys, which is boring. And you can't underestimate the will of players to ruin their own fun in favor of efficiency. Okay, the game is content complete. Time for polish. I created a parallax background, staying within the teal colors. I went for my first instinct of making trees and hills, with some kind of straight lines, so it feels a bit abstract. And putting it in the game, I realized it didn't fit at all in the game's blocky world. It almost felt like a creepy apocalyptic world, so I scrapped it and went for something simpler, reusing blocks from the tile set but with a color swap, going smaller and with less detail on every layer of parallax, like if there were multiple layers of blacky levels in the background. Then I added music, using a pack from Steven Mellon again. For extra tension, I sped up the music when the player needs to quickly find a key at the end of a level. One thing I really like in Xenowood's original game was his transition screen, 
so I tried mimicking it by making a black box rotate over the screen with a widget animation. And load the next level when the box is fully covering the screen. Then a lot of audio work, sound effects are way too often ignored, but they are crucial to a game feel. I added sound on collectibles, jump, land, hook projectile, hook connection. I also added a whoosh sound when disconnecting from the hook, to have a feel of speed when swinging around, a popping sound when destroying balls, bomb explosion, fireworks. I was out of ideas for the flying dispenser and found kazoo sounds, and it was too funny to not add to the game. The shop, the boss and their attacks. Then something memorable in Xander Woods game was the voiceovers when starting a level and when finding a key. My girlfriend has volunteered a couple of times to make voiceovers for my games. Let's go! So it was the perfect opportunity to ask her. Hurry up! Then something I thought was problematic in Xander Woods game is that it was hard to tell how much resources you gathered in a level, making it hard to tell how efficient you were. So I created a result screen at the end of levels, showing how many of each resources you gathered. To help with the feedback I received for the shop being hard to understand at first, I added a text pop-up the first time you open the shop, explaining how it works, and tweaked the menu a bit. Then I slipped a music volume option. I made it so that if you try a level that you already have the key, a shape of an empty key appears, and picking it up gives you 10 money instead. The main character was still missing animations, so I created 8 hook animation poses for all 45 degree angles. Depending on the angle between the hook point and the character, I take the closest animation, change the line starting position, and slightly rotate the sprite so it's perfectly aligned with the hook line. And the very last thing I did was a walk animation. Then I sent it to Xanderwood for him to play. Hookshot Hero Remake. A game that has balls and crafting. That's what I said. I just love it. It's got such a rocky mullet feel to it. And I love the animation on this guy. That animation is juicy. Wood, it tells you exactly what, you, what you're getting. Hookshot. That is awesome. I love how that is an upgrade. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Nails. Oh, I can get nails. D to swing. Oh my goodness. It's so smooth. The controls are great. It'd be good to kind of get a little crosshairs, but I mean, that is just a minor gripe. I love how everything slows down and how these change color. So much more attention to detail. And the background as well. Oh my goodness, that's great. I love the little uh, reload sound when you get one. Firework uh, gives you a, uh, a radius that's brilliant. I think I've used it too soon though. Oh, good job, another one's coming along. I just love how you're not overwhelmed with these balls straight away. It just gives you a real opportunity to learn. And I am learning so much. <laughs> and there's money. Find the key. Found it. Ah, oh, that's just so cool. That is so good. Gathered resources. It's so much clearer. There's absolutely no room for confusion here. Okay, so I can craft a bomb using five string and five metal. And uh, I can buy these upgrades with money. What a great idea. That would have stopped the level grinding. Love it. That's my map. Love the bridge. Oh, now I'm on level one. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. Now it's time to come and do the actual hard bits. Now I've had the uh, nice easy tutorial. Oh, there's definitely a spike there. Oh no! Let's get another one of those. Let's go. Let's go. Indeed, let's go. Let's go this way. Get money. The key. Where's the key? Oh. <laughs> ah no! Oh come on! I didn't. I didn't get a key. I need wood and I need metal. I can buy. I got loads of money. Oh, come on! Smashy, smashy. Get all of this. I'm never gonna need nails again. No! Get a key! Oh my god. Well, I have money. Now I have metal. 
but I still need to, I need the key so I can unlock level two. I'm gonna be able to start my own string and nail store after this. But I love how it's true to the original where certain levels give you uh, certain items over, right, I'm just gonna wait up here. I love the little animations on these little things. That's brilliant. I almost didn't get it. I was looking at the animation. Now I have my wood. Well, I don't. And I didn't get any money, but I can unlock. And this one gives me wood, fine. The level design on this is just so much better than mine. Oh, for Christ's sake. And all the little bits of added polish. Oh my word, what's going on? We do now have a bridge and we can now craft it. I want to get to that boss. I got to see what's going on over there. Just survive long enough. Not Just don't land on spikes. Quite simple. I love how much money I'm getting, but I hate how much health I don't have. Right, where's the key? Where is it? Oh, right, what? Oh, it's right over there. Uh, I can blow this up. Thank you. Oh, look at all that goodies. Ah! Nails, I'll take some. Even though I've got enough to open a nail shop, I'll take more nails. Take those nails. Three, two, and I got it. We're rocking and rolling now. We are rocky mulleting. Right, what do I need? Uh, I just need wood. I can get wood on this one. Yeah, so let's go to this one. Let's go. Ah, oh, I remember that. True to the original level design. Let's get through here. Another bomb. Oh, I like it. Oh, I love how I love how you can just progress it. Let's get more nails for the nail shop. Ah, oh, I, I blew it at the wrong place. Oh, I couldn't see. I can still come here anyway. Let's go. Nice. I absolutely love that hookshot action. Where's the key? Oh, it's here. Do I know where the key is? I know where it is. And I've got enough. And I've got the bridge. We're good to go. I've got enough. I just need the key so I can unlock the boss level. Oh, I've changed the level. Not going down there. How silly do you think I am? Ah. Oh, Destroyed myself in the spikes. Yeah, this is gonna be amazing. Oh yeah. That is beautiful. Uh, and I've still got two more fireworks. The key is definitely not on this side. Oh, there's just so much stuff, I just wanted to get it all. Nails for the nail shop. Money? I think it's up here. If it's true to my original game, it's probably over here somewhere. Nails for the nail shop. There it is. All right, here we go. Bring on the boss. You're mine, boss man. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I really should have come better prepared. <laughs> <He's mad. laughs> what a great sound effect. Got him. Love it. It's so much better than my boss. Hopefully it's easier than my boss because I'd never kill my boss with the limited health that I have. Yeah, nails. I don't know why, but we're collecting nails for the nail shop. He keeps burping up these bloody bubbles. Yes, nails for the nail shop. I don't know why I keep saying that. Oh my god, now he's getting faster. Ah! Ah, what the hell? Okay, I think to kill this guy, I'm going to need a lot of fireworks. No, I need health. Five. Oh, and an extra one. Oh god. Use the hook shot the way God intended. Where's he gone? Oh my god. Yes. I just love how it's slow. And it... It gives you opportunities to get out of the way. That is a real added bonus. And <laughs> the little animations on him are brilliant. Oh, that was some good dodging. But I can hit him from here pretty quick. Oh my word, that is fast. No, don't, what? Don't jump into them, you idiot. Oh no, this is not gonna end well for me. And just try not to lose any health whatsoever. I kind of need that heart. Can I leave it there? Oh my goodness. Now I need the heart. Come on. Let's take this guy down. I feel like I need some kind of a shelter to hide behind. Uh oh. Swig over there. Whoa, what a good escape. So I think maybe I just need to use the hookshot better to avoid things. Holy crap. This guy is... This guy's on a mission. My goodness. What is, go what is going on? Maximum concentration on. Yes. Did I just do it? Did I get him? 
<laughs> I love it. What a cool end screen. I love the little crying tear there. That is awesome. Well done. Hats off. Can't believe I completed it. This is the level that I need to aspire to. Thanks so much, Rocky Mullet, for taking part in this collab challenge. It's been amazing. It's been so much fun. Thank you, Xanderwood, for this opportunity. I wish you the best with your nail shop business. I do like the game I ended up making. I'm used to make very linear games with a beginning and an end. So it was refreshing to make something more varied with a shop, upgrades, gathering resources and selectable levels. It was interesting to analyze Xanderwood's game to see how I could make it better. To be constrained by somebody's original ID and be forced into making something new. It was definitely fun to make. For the sake of transparency, I had to point out that I wasn't constrained in a 7 day game jam like Xanderwood was, and I actually spent almost 3 weeks working on it. And as I was doing that, Xanderwood was remaking my game Tough Love with extra mullets, which is obviously an improvement. Go check it out! I'm Rocky Mullet, if you want to try my remake of Hookshot Hero or any of my stuff, Mage Page is in the description. 